uh, I tend to, uh, just to grab um, names out of the air, um, I, I like Graham Greene a lot, so you see quite a few Graham Greene upstairs. Uh, I like um, Tony Morrison, but I, I, there aren't many up there. T I think Tony Morrison makes me really feel what it was like to be a slave or to be black in the days of segregation in the uh, US. But she does it in such a creative way, you know, not in a banging, your head, banging you over the head with it. Brilliant books like Beloved and Sula. Uh, upstairs you'll also see a certain amount of Patrick White uh, because I was an admirer of his early books in particular. Not as... But, I mean, you're lucky, you're lucky if you write one good book in a lifetime. You see, in the 19th century, when there was cholera and tuberculosis around, writers were killed at a decent age in their 30s after they'd written their one or two good books. Uh, happened to the Bronte sisters. It happened tragically and too young to Keats. I'm sure Keats still had a lot in him. But we go on grinding them out, you know, um, and uh, I'm not going to volunteer to stop grinding them out because that'll mean um, uh, death. But um, uh, the Patrick White's early novels I really like. Uh, a lot of the novels upstairs are obscure but have a personal connection. Uh, I have a personal connection with. Um, uh, pa uh, um, Peter Carey I like a lot, particularly uh, Illy Wacker and Oscar and Lucinda. Uh, they're, they're really my favourites. Uh, uh, there are a number of uh, poets upstairs, um, uh, and uh, I was much stricken. You guys might, some of you um, older people in the audience, which excludes most of you I know, um, <laughs> might remember a famous playwright called Christopher Fry, who wrote blank verse plays. And he was all the rage. And T.S. Eliot wrote a blank verse um, play called The Murder in the Cathedral. Well, I've got Christopher Fry's two classics up there. They were, they were great favourites of, uh, of mine. So there's some of my uh, favourite writers. Uh, amongst the... Um, historians there are a number uh, and there aren't too many books of his up there because he hasn't written too many but there's an absolute knockout Russian historian called um, Orlando Figes, F-I-G-E-S and although there's been a, a recent literary scandal uh, about him and we all love literary scandals as long as it's not us it's like at the Christian Brothers uh, looking at a boy getting the strap and thinking, thank God it's not me, you know. And there's a certain voyeuristic pleasure in it too. Um, not as big as at Eton, but there you go. Uh, the, um, yeah, uh, Figus has got into trouble recently over a um, blog he ran attacking other historians when he didn't need to because he's the best. Um, so there, there are people up there who've just written one, for example, Thomas Pynchon's Gravity's Rainbow is up there. It's, it's one of my favorites. Now, I, I don't read, it, it is the truth that my wife is, is, uh, has bought most of the thrillers that are up there or detective stories because I, I I always find them disappointing. I've spoken about this to some of the volunteers whom I thank from my heart who've been cataloguing the books. Uh, 
you know, you've got this great um, feeling of imminent evil through most of the story. It's when you come down to who it was that the murderer isn't quite up to the cosmic scale of the terror at the front of the book. But having said that, I went crazy for Stieg Larsson. I couldn't stop reading Stieg Larsson. And I still think uh, Sherlock Holmes is fantastic. Um, I, I never had that feeling with Conan Doyle. Uh, and I, there was a woman called um, Josephine Tay, T-E-Y, who used to write uh, 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 mysteries of various kinds, in, including one on Richard III and the children in the tower and so on, uh, who killed those princes in the tower. Uh, was it the Tudors or was it Richard the Three? Uh, and it looks as though it might have been the Tudors, if you believe Josephine, Josephine Tay. But those... Uh, so, so uh, And I wish I could write detective stories because they're the area of fiction that's holding up a bit in the global financial crisis. <laughs> so... Uh, I, 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 I don't enjoy Dan Brown's writing, but God, I wish I could write like that <laughs> and have his royalties. Um, I don't know if the poetry of Jared Manley Hopkins uh, is up there yet. Uh, it's got my name in uh, as uh, either T.M. Keneally or... But, but yes, they go back to um, boyhood because I don't know about you, uh, Susan, but do you find it hard to chuck out your school books, your old school books? Yes, it's hard to... It's hard to throw out those books that had an impact on you when you were young because books never again, have quite that, uh, you know, you've, it's like your first love. Uh, never quite have that, quite that pervasive cosmic impact on you uh, that uh, later reading does as enjoyable as that is. Um, uh, I look in particular to two sources for primary sources on Australian history. And one is um, Project Gutenberg, which has all the journals of the explorers on them. Now, I've got a two-volume history of Giles's travels in uh, expeditions in, in um, uh, Central Australia. And, uh, but you can get it all through Project Gutenberg. Uh, I read, for example, uh, for World War I, uh, the work, uh, a, a novel called Her Private's We, uh, an unfortunate, but it's her privates, W.E., which is about an Australian serving in a British regiment on the Western Front, and it's on Project Gutenberg. But I was writing about the front, reading about the frontier wars in Queensland, which were very bitter and savage, because by then, by the time the pastoralists were settling Queensland, they had Snyder and Martini Henry rifles, which would shoot uh, with rapidity. Uh, they were repeater rifles. And so um, the, the savagery of the frontier wars up there and the amount of blood uh, spilt was considerable. Now, I remember there was a remarkable policeman up there called Wiltshire. And Wiltshire had um, 
gone out whenever a white man was speared, someone on the overland telegraph, and taken his native policeman with him, and they had hunted down the miscreants. But on the way, they'd do a lot of damage because the native police were recruit, recruited from down here in New South Wales and along the Murray. And so they um, uh, had no fellow feeling with the North Queensland uh, Aboriginals. So Wiltshire wrote a book about all this. He wrote it as an adventure. He's hunting down of the savages and his relationship with his own troopers and his relationship with pastoralists and the question of Aboriginal women and what you did with Aboriginal children who were left over at the end of a search and destroy mission, which is basically what they were. And uh, that book was on a website called archive.org. Um, and what you do is write in archive.org, a website comes up, and you go to texts, and you go to American libraries, not Australian libraries yet. The reason you go to American libraries is that they have downloaded onto the internet more books than we have yet. The state library has a machine I believe, which is going to be able to download a whole heap of books uh, onto the internet. But when this book comes up, it has, when these books come up, they have pages. And you, you just turn the page by clicking the mouse, and the page turns. Um, and I have to say, even though I'm about to be made obsolescent by technology, that it's admirable uh, technology. And uh, uh, the books one would have had to either read in the State Library or track down through an antiquarian, a second-hand bookseller uh, once are all there. Um, and uh, that, that is wonderful. Um, Blackbirding, capturing South Sea Island, particularly Vanuatan uh, natives, to work on the sugar plantations. The great writer, the, the bloke who, who both did it and wrote a book about, short stories about it, was a fellow called Louis Beck, B-E-C-K-E. And uh, all his material on that subject is on Project Gutenberg. So, um, you know, we don't need as many books as we did. It's, uh, it, it's uh, interesting time, but I don't think we can, uh, it's terribly convenient. The convenience is going to win out um, in the end, but it may still be convenient to have the hard copy uh, and underline it in, with your own, mark it with your own marker. Well, I'm interested in them as a citizen, yes. Um, and um, I've often thought that there must be great drama in the way these issues are parlied, say, between mining companies and governments. Um, and one of the great lacks in Australian literature, I think, is um, that we don't write because we don't know enough about it and when, uh, about business. I mean, there's some very fine, actually, business um, histories, but when it comes to the novel, um, you could write, I mean, there's a great novel in Murdoch. Um, there's a great novel in Keith.